Just a little bit about how Nano Dimension and Zoo can start working together. It, it, it was really the beginnings of a, a customer problem. Uh, the company that we were working with, they had uh, concerns about lead time on how they wanted to service their customers and also being able to scale on, on different production volumes. I mean, you could certainly say it's very cu customer driven. And you know, from what was originally, you, know, you guys perhaps ought to have a chat because you're really both operating at that ideation that, uh, you know, that, that our end of the R&D stage where the designers are really working through ideas and you know, to be able to more closely integrate the, the, that design stage with you know, in-house manufacturing capability as a, as a time compression uh, tool, I think it's fantastic. But I, I think it's fair to say that you know, as a result of those discussions, you know, as with anything, you start digging into it and you start seeing the applications, the opportunities down the road, not just in ideation, but perhaps you know, solving some of the bigger issues that uh, the electronic space is, is going to confront down the line. And this kind of also helped motivate the user experience. Once we kind of understood the types of problems they were going through in the process, you know, we came to a conclusion that you know, not only do we need to create that enablement, but also start looking at how we can enhance that experience once we start investigating other companies that were interested in this type of uh, flow and process. So CR8000 Design Force is the market's first native 3D system level environment, which allows the engineers and designers to work together in a more collaborative platform across multiple disciplines. And then when we're working together with Nano Dimensions, we're leveraging the technology of Design Force to enable design rules, DFM checking, and again, looking at how we can streamline that process down into the uh, printing phase. So the Dragonfly 2020 uh, printer is designed to print uh, rigid circuits using a, a dielectric polymer material which is very similar to FR4 and its uh, dielectric properties and nanoparticle silver inks which are a well established uh, conductive material in the, in the printing space. What you can do is port over your, your Gerber designs uh, and uh, your Exelon, your drill files and the printer will faithfully build up that object, that multi-layer uh, circuit, you know, from the bottom up. You can also print a thinner object and get a certain amount of flex. And there's an additional party trick uh, with a slightly different software package where you can also pull in traditional CAD uh, 3D files and go fully non-planar. And in that way, you're able to print uh, geometries that are non-flat. Uh, you can look at things from coils to, to offset vias and all kinds of uh, unusual fan outs. But that really allows one to start thinking about integrating structure and function. Primarily, however, uh, and this is the, the collaboration with Zukan, is that ability to print flawlessly from, from uh, your design environment straight through to the printer, uh, you know, traditional multi-layer files. And I think down the road, we'll see perhaps non-planar elements as well. Yeah, our DFM Inkjet product is uh, basically a solution that allows you to optimize your designs for the printing process in itself. It's uh, When you start looking at additive manufacturing and using an inkjet printer, the process is very different from your standard manufacturing. So we start looking at how inklets drops and how you want to optimize that against a bitmap that goes into a printer. Our inkjet, uh, DFM inkjet product allows you to go through and optimize uh, the surfaces so you get the best quality output from the printing process. From Nano Dimensions' perspective, um, you know, we're, we're very much wedded at the time being to inkjet technology. It's the most uh, readily adapted to, to higher throughput, so you can print a very large uh, amounts of ink and the throughput is ultimately what you need to scale production. So our current systems are really lab, uh, lab desktop type, uh, type size, but there's no reason that inkjet can't scale to lower volume manufacturing. And when it comes to what perhaps might be an additional bonus, inkjet's particularly well suited to multi-material printing, so adding materials. And I believe down the line, one will be able to print rigid and flexible and probably also a fair number of the resistive materials as well. Um, and if you really need to start you know, meeting those requirements of, of uh, you know, density of function, of miniaturization of, of circuitry, um, you know, 3D is going to be one of the tools to allow for embedding, to allow for new shapes. Uh, and uh, you know, inkjet for now would be the most suitable in our opinion. And the opportunities are endless, right? So you can go through and, you know, we're starting with some, you know, basic rigid and flex structures. 
But once we start getting into multi-materials, especially on the conductive side, uh, this opens up a whole new opportunity of leveraging the technologies that we have to basically applying it to a whole broad uh, of applications that are out there. And it's only going to grow from there. So this is a whole big opportunity space for nanodimensions in Zucan.